West India Fruit and Steamship Company. The West India Fruit and Steamship Company operated a railcar ferry service between the port of Palm Beach, Florida, and Havana, Cuba, from shortly after World War Roman II until deteriorating relations between the United States and Cuba culminated in the United States embargo against Cuba. The company offered six of its ferries for sale in June 1961, citing the fact that trade had dwindled to the vanishing point and service system in August 1961. WIF and SS Company, in its role as a car ferry operator, acted as both a railroad and a steamship line. The service was described as the superior all-rail route to Cuba. Freight from anywhere in North America could be routed to Cuban consignees in the same cars and packaging in which it left point of origin in the United States. This had advantages enumerated in WIF and SS Company sales literature due strands of time, less handling of freight, and no repackaging. Vessels During its history, the WRF and SS Company operated a total of five car ferries to Cuba very similar in design and operation to the ferries built for Great Lakes service. In addition, the company operated two other vessels between the United States and Cuba. SS Grand Haven Car Ferry, SS Henry and Flagler Car Ferry, SS Joseph R. Powart Car Ferry, SS New Grand Haven Car Ferry, SS City of New Orleans Car Ferry, SS Sea Level Ship, SS City of Havana Automobile Ferry. The Grand Haven was formerly a Grand Trunk Milwaukee Car Ferry Company vessel used previously in Translate Michigan service. She was built by Craig Shipbuilding of Toledo, Ohio, in 1903 and appears, from photographic evidence, to be the only ferry in Cuban service fitted with the Stone Gate, a U. S. Coast Guard requirement for Great Lakes car ferries. She was retired by the WIF and SS Company in 1960. Grand Trunk Milwaukee was a Grand Trunk Railway subsidiary, which itself was a subsidiary of Canadian National Railway, then a Crown Corporation. The Henry M. Flabler and the Joseph R. Parrot, former Florida East Coast Car Ferry Company vessels, were built by William Cramp and Sons of Philadelphia in 1914 and 1916 respectively for service between Key West, Florida and Havana, Cuba. Requisitioned by the U.S. Navy for duties in World War Roman II, they were subsequently acquired by WIF and SS Company for post-war service. Florida East Coast Car Ferry Company was a Florida East Coast Railway subsidiary and chose not to re-enter the car ferry trade after the war. The new Grand Haven was built by Canadian Vickers Limited in Montreal in 1951. The city of New Orleans was built by Kyo Shipbuilding and Engineering Company of Kyo City, Japan, in 1959. It is believed she only made approximately 100 trips before service to Cuba was suspended. In addition to the car ferries, the company purchased from Seatrain Lines, Seatrain New Orleans, a four-deck ship built by Swan, Hunter, and Wigan Richardson of Newcastle upon Tyne, England, in 1928. She ran from Balshas, New Orleans, to Havana. Cars were loaded and unloaded by crane and cradles. She was renamed sea level by the WIF and SS Company and continued in service from Balshas. The company also operated an automobile and passenger ferry the city of Havana between Key West and Havana. All the car ferries were active till the cessation of service except for the Grand Haven which had been retired in 1960. Rail Equipment The WIF and SS Company operated at various times a fleet of WIF Mark refrigerator cars and boxcars. In a railroad section of the January 1957 official railway equipment register, 260 cars were listed. Connections at Palm Beach, the company connected with the Florida East Coast Railway FEC via the West Palm Beach Terminal Company WPBT. WPBT physically switched railcars on and off the ferries for the WIF and SS Company. Freight and cars from any North American railway could be routed to the FEC by way of interchange in Jacksonville, Florida. A Havana connection was with the Ferro Carrales Unidos de la Habana FCAP or in English United Railways of Havana, which had interchanges with the other Cuban railways. At Belchese, LA the WIF and SS Company connected the rest of the North American system via the New Orleans and Lower Coast and Missouri Pacific subsidiary. Operations No transfer of commodities was necessary upon arrival or rail cars in Havana. Cuban railways handled the rail cars directly to consignees. North American owned rail cars operated routinely throughout Cuba, but evidence suggests that cars of the Cuban railways rarely, if ever, operated on North American roads. The WIF and SS Company maintained a fleet of refrigerator cars and boxcars with WIF reporting marks. WIF boxcars did regularly operate throughout the United States. Cargo carried northward included tobacco, refined sugar, pineapples, rum, tomatoes, slot house byproducts, and scrap metal. Cuban bound freight included less than carlo merchandise, manufactured goods, chemicals, lard, railway equipment, temperate zone fruits such as apples, pears, and grapes, meat, dairy steel products, and machinery, including oversized loads. 
foreigners and competitors. Other known companies engaged in United States Cuba Car Ferry service are as follows. The Florida East Coast Car Ferry Company, beginning in 1915, operated a service from Key West, Florida to Havana. After the Labor Day hurricane of 1935 destroyed the FEC Key West extension, service was transferred to Port Everglades. Three ferries were operated until World War Roman II when they were requisitioned by the Navy. The two that survived the war were acquired by the WIF and SS Company and restored their original names. After the war, FEC did not resume car ferry service. Sea train lines participated in the coasting trade beginning in 1929 hauling rail cars between Hoboken, New Jersey, Savannah, Georgia, New Orleans, Louisiana, Havana, Cuba, and Texas City, Texas. In 1953, Sea Train sold its rights in one vessel in the New Orleans to Havana trade to the WIF and SS Company. Sioux and trade free lines operated at least one ship, the Antonio Maceo, out of Port Everglades to Cuba. The Antonio Maceo had a substantially different configuration than the Great Lakes style ships used by the WIF and SS Company. Very little documentation exists on this company, and possibly service did not last for an extended period. Service started some day after World War Roman II.